This is by far the worst part of reselling for every single reseller out there and something you cannot avoid. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about the worst part of reselling in general, and that's paying your taxes. For a lot of people, if you're new to this, you may not understand how some of this works. Biggest factor is that it's a quarterly status that you run your business on. First quarter, second quarter, third quarter. We're in fourth quarter right now. If you're self-employed, which most obviously most everybody out there doing this is self-employed, whether you're an S-Corp or not, or even an LLC, those are just pass-throughs. So technically, you are self-employed no matter what type of business, whether it's an S-Corp, which is probably the best, or LLC or sole proprietor. Now, I'm not a tax professional at all. I've been doing taxes for a very long time. We have accountants. I do part of it. They give me totals, and then I make the payments. This is our quarterly payment. I think you can see it right there. We just paid $8,500 through direct pay through the IRS. As a S-Corp, you personally pay for your salary and then any other uh, dividends paid out through you as a shareholder of the corporation that's the S-Corp. S-Corp's basically just a pass-through, meaning it's a way to avoid paying some taxes. Now, I'm not going to go into a ton of details. There are many different ways you can do your taxes. Of course, when you're paying your taxes, you're paying your taxes based on all the deductions, your expenses, and everything else. If you paid a set amount last year, and last year was your first time running a business, you have to pay at least as much as last year. At least that's how it used to be. The minimum was always considered what you paid the year before. So you could get money back. Now, I technically don't have to file to the 15th of January and pay my fourth quarter uh, payment. I always pay it that year, the year it comes from, so it's already out of our financials. Your payments that you're paying for taxes, these payments are self-employed taxes, taxes on your income that you would pay. And you do pay them again quarterly. So four times a year, you are going to have to pop in and pay taxes. Now, they're estimates. So I just do a set amount and I add a couple hundred extra bucks. And every time I do it, again, you, you do them throughout the year, four times a year is what you should be paying your taxes. So come the end of the year, you shouldn't have a fortune due in taxes. So again, you've got to be extremely careful. We just paid today $8,500 for fourth quarter. Of course, that is an estimate. The biggest factor is if you owe money, there could be a penalty on it. So we always pay a couple hundred extra bucks for each time we make a payment to make sure that there's 1500 to 2000 extra dollars in there just in case. If I don't owe anything, what happens? I get a return. It's just like if you're working for somebody else and you pick the correct designation where they take more out throughout the your paychecks. And at the end of the year, when you file, you can get a return. So that's what we do. I'd rather not have a penalty and I'd rather lock it in to the year that the, the taxes are to be paid on. Again, you could pay it on the 15th. That's your due date of January 15th to file your quarterly payments. So just be cautious on that. It just depends on how you run your business. Now, direct pay is usually the easiest way to do this. Now, we have accountants, like I said. I've got a payroll account that handles payroll taxes to the state of Ohio as well as federal, you know, workman's comp and all of that sort of thing. That comes out of one account. And then the rest, after submitting my paperwork, I'll get a total back. And that total is the amount that I need to pay. So we go in and then we'll pay again to the IRS through direct pay our taxes for that quarter. That's the typical route of doing it. That way, an accountant isn't going to have two separate business accounts, bank accounts from me. Again, I've got a bank account just for 
our workman's comp in Ohio compensation, and it also pays the accountants. And then we've got another one where we put our money in for taxes. We've got multiple bank accounts, which is what I would always recommend for any business out there, even if you're small. Biggest factor on that is those bank accounts are usually free if they're business accounts at your local bank. I could open up a dozen more bank accounts at my bank for free. That way I can keep separate entities. So an LLC, you might have three or four of them for your main business. Nothing at all wrong with that. At the end of the day, everything is compiled. All the business structure we have, all the money that goes through after, again, all deductions are made. Employment and taxes are pulled out too. So depending on how you file, you may be paying twice for some services. If you're paying salary through, say, an LLC, the LLC may have to pay it. And then when you take the money out, you may have to pay it as well. So again, it just depends on how you file. Once again, I am not an accountant. I'm not going to tell you right or wrong ways. You're going to have to seek out an accountant, which I always, always recommend. Look in the Better Business Bureau, pick out one, write down all your questions. Many times the accountants around you probably offer a first initial visit for free. That's exactly how I signed up and got ours. I went to several different free ones. I had a whole list of questions that I asked each and every one. So we picked the one that had the best rating and did the best with the questions that we had asked. They knew the answers immediately. There was no hassle. They were able to quote figures and numbers and the whole works. So keep those thoughts in mind. We're going to hop over and I'm just going to show you the direct pay option. If you don't know about it, if your accountant and you haven't worked out some payment processing plan or anything else like that. You can save a little money by not having your accountant actually process it. They won't have your bank account information either that way. And then they'll just give you the total. You'll take the time out and just go ahead and pay it. It takes a whopping two or three minutes at the most to make your quarterly payment yourself. So we're at the IRS's site. So if you want to get to this page, just type in IRS, go to the IRS's page. And then when it says search, type in direct pay with bank account and this will pop up. This is the best way to do it. Now, I'm not going to pop in here and show you because obviously I've already done mine. I'd have to put in some information that I don't want to give out as well. Now, we use a very specific bank account for this because I can track the amount of payments that I made every time I made one through my bank. So I never, ever have to worry about IRS losing something or anything else like that. It's always tied to the very same bank account. If you have employees, you should have one bank account for your payroll, workman's comp, and all that kind of stuff. And then a second bank account for your actual federal taxes on the income that you're making. If you have an S Corp again, there's different stipulations. You're, you're going to basically file two different ways, kind of. You're going to have to file as a pass-through information-wise only for your S Corp using the 1120S form instead of the 1120 for your main business. That's the biggest difference. And then you'll have to file a K and a K1 as an S Corp. Or, of course, your, your accountant may have to do that. Now, if you're a corporation, you'd have to go through a totally different system here. The EFTPS system is the other system. This is for bigger businesses, bigger companies, and the whole works. To find that, you just type in EFTPS, colon, the Electronic Federal Tax Payment System, as soon as you land on the IRS's page. Now, we have an account with the IRS. You can create an account and you can see all the information on your account directly at the IRS as well. It has everything there. You can pretty much peek around and see anything you really kind of want to see on there. It's safe. It's complete. It comes out of your bank account. So if you're uncomfortable giving out a bank routing number and your account number, this option is not for you. You can obviously mail in a payment. There are other options to do your quarterly, but I just do it through the bank. It's the easiest way. That way I can instantly check out and see the payments and then make sure they've been made, make sure they process, make sure there's no issues with them. Now, one other thing to consider, if you're not making money, even though you're selling items on eBay, you don't have to pay taxes unless you made a profit. There's a $600 reporting limit. If you've done over $600, eBay or any entity on the internet has to report that to the federal government. Now, this isn't a change in you being required to pay taxes. This is just a reporting change. If you've made over $600 for the last 10 years, you've always had to pay taxes on it. 
they just didn't report it to the government. Now, again, they are reporting it to the government. So there is no real change. If you're selling stuff from your house and you're not making a profit on it, you don't have to pay anything on it. So don't worry about that. If you don't have receipts for it, you can sign affidavits for the actual value based on what your guesstimate is on the time frame and the price it was when you first bought those items. That's how you do that. You have to swear by what you're stating. There are forms out there where you can get basically a, a rough roundabout estimate on the value on the items that you are selling. How much you paid for them, I guess. The value it would have cost you to buy them when they were new. Let's say you bought a VCR. You don't need it anymore. You spent $100 five years ago or thereabouts. You sold it for $50. You don't have to pay uh, income tax on it. You didn't make any money. It's only for profit made. So don't panic. Don't freak out about that because you don't have to pay if you didn't make a profit. Again, there's many other ways, just like if you're writing down mileage. They're trusting that you're being honest with that mileage. And the same thing goes with multiple things like, you know, what you originally paid for the item, something you had for five or 10 years. Again, check with an accountant. I am not an accountant. Done this for a while, though. I do understand how the process works. Hopefully you dig into it and read up on it yourself so you can understand the process as well. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. America's classic thrillers come to life. The Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew Mysteries. An adventure into suspense. There's got to be a way out of here. Can you used to go with her? Forget that. Oh, Professor, do you go sleep footprints? The adventures of America's favorite young detectives come to television. Follow that ghost. The Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew Mysteries.